Hi, I'm John Ardell, Pro Vice Chancellor for Health and Life Sciences here at the University of Bristol. Welcome to the next in our series of Fireside Conversations. These are conversations in which I speak to colleagues who are at the forefront of research into addressing the challenges that the COVID pandemic has posed us as a society and as a university. Since COVID arrived in December, researchers around the world have been working at pace to attempt to define and to deliver a therapy, either a novel therapy or an existing drug that can effectively treat patients from the effects of this virus. Given that so little was known at the outset about COVID-19, I'm interested in exploring how the research community set about designing trials to do exactly this, to work out what existing drugs might be effective, and to learn a little bit more about how data science is being applied to better understand the disease caused by COVID-19 and its implications for patients. So it is a huge uh, pleasure to invite this afternoon um, a discussion with Professor Jonathan Stern. Jonathan is Professor of Medical Statistics and Epidemiology in the Bristol Medical School. So welcome, Jonathan. Thank you, John. I, what I'd like to do is to kick off, if I may, I mean, I know that your group were very heavily involved in the establishment of the WHO multi-centre international trial of antivirals. Could you tell us a little bit about how you came to be involved in that, uh, what happened and what the Bristol input was, please? Sure. So, as uh, has been widely publicised in the literature, WHO received a lot of criticism for its initial response to the uh, Ebola uh, epidemic in West Africa a few years ago. And subsequent to that, perhaps what's rather less well publicised is that a uh, colleague at WHO, Dr. Anna Maria N. R. Restrepo, uh, ran a very large and successful uh, vaccine trial against Ebola in West Africa, and that definitively established a particular vaccine to be effective. And the WHO uh, also hugely scaled up its response to Ebola subsequent to that. And following all that work, uh, the WHO wanted to think carefully about how to be prepared for pandemics uh, or indeed epidemics. The fundamental problem being that in situations with infectious diseases where uh, the number of cases rises sharply and then falls again, you need to be ready to do research very quickly uh, in order to uh, recruit patients to trials um, to, of treatments or of vaccines uh, while there are still large numbers of patients. So they set up something called the Blueprint Group a few years ago, and I became part of that, as did uh, my colleague Julian Higgins. And we had some meetings about how to design trials of treatments and vaccines, and we produced a Blueprint document. Uh, and during all those discussions, which tended to focus on Ebola or Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome or Lassa fever, they always listed a pathogen X. And pathogen X was explicitly the thing that they didn't yet know about. So you see where all this is going. Uh, then coronavirus happens and very rapidly this blueprint moved from being quite a theoretical exercise to being an urgent global health priority. And um, various colleagues started getting involved in making this into a reality of rolling out very rapidly trials to find out whether treatments could be effective against COVID-19. Uh, and roughly speaking, because my involvement in, blue, in the blueprint work, uh, I became involved in the WHO's solidarity trial. Great. So um, clearly a big challenge. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit more about how the trial was designed? Um, how does it work when you want to trial a series of existing drugs and work out which one works or which combination works? Sure. Well, the principle underlying the WHO solidarity trial and indeed the closely related recovery trial, which is being conducted in the, U in the UK, is to make things simple and make them big. So what we're really interested in knowing about is effects on mortality. And Sir Richard Pito, who works in Oxford and was involved in the design of both trials, uh, more than 40 years ago, wrote a very influential paper which said, to look at important effects, we need large, simple trials. 
we need to recruit large numbers of patients and we need to keep everything very simple. And that's the principle underpinning both trials. So both of these trials are very pragmatic. They recruit any patient who's been hospitalized with COVID-19. Uh, and then patients are assigned at random to one of a number of possible treatment options and they're followed up for the most important outcomes such as whether the patient had to be uh, ventilated, whether they ended up in intensive care and whether they died. Great. So um, my understanding is that Bristol also played a part in establishing the principles underpinning the randomization uh, of patients. Is that correct? Indeed. So uh, back uh, in, in early March, um, the solidarity trial protocol was being finalized and there was a big call uh, where people discussed it. And uh, there were some very interesting features about the trial. So if you're going to roll out a trial across a whole number of hospitals in a whole different number of countries, uh, then you have to allow, for, for example, for the fact that some hospitals won't have all the treatments available at any one time. So I asked a number of questions about this, and then I emailed uh, Dr. Nara Restrepo at WH afterwards saying, uh, is there anything I can do? And then she called me and said, well, could Bristol set up a randomization system for us? So uh, I, we have an excellent trial center in Bristol, and I approached the trial center, and as you remember, John, I also approached you and a few senior people and said, is this something Bristol would be interested in doing? And the answer was emphatically yes, both from the trial center staff and from senior people in the university. And so work began uh, very, very quickly on, I think, about March the 12th or 13th. And the team, within about 10 days, had produced a protocol online system that could be used to randomize patients in accordance with this very flexible protocol. Uh, uh, that's great, and, uh, and uh, like you, I, I was really impressed, I mean really impressed with the way the team just came together to deliver this important piece of work uh, for, for the WHO. It, it's a fantastic story and a, and a testament to the quality of our staff and colleagues, I think. So um, I, I know, Jonathan, you've, well, uh, to say you've, you're interested in data is something of an understatement. Um, <laughs> you have a long-standing interest in data. Um, but with uh, the so-called Better Care Partnership uh, and uh, uh, through, through that, the University of Bristol recently joining Health Data Research UK uh, and the opportunities presented by the COVID pandemic, um, uh, th 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 there is a lot happening in this, in this area right now. And it'd be really good if you could just tell us a little bit about it, particularly with re relevance to, to the, the, uh, the COVID pandemic. Yeah, and in the story I've just told about how Bristol got involved in the solidarity trial, uh, it's a story of things that were happening anyway, and then everything shifting towards COVID-19. And along a similar vein, I mean, everybody knows that there's huge potential to look at, root, at, the, very, at the wealth of detail in root, routinely collected de uh, health data collected as part of routine health services and use those to improve healthcare. And as part of the work of the NIHR Bristol Biomedical Research Centre, which you know all about, John, because you're the director and I'm the deputy director, we are tasked with uh, doing work in, in this space, and we've been trying to uh, make progress with it for some time. And uh, we've been working with colleagues across the regional NHS, uh, and the regional NHS is trying to do the same sorts of things and has established something that's called the Bristol, North Somerset and South Gloucester system-wide data set, where they've linked data from primary care, that's general practices, with data from acute care or secondary care, in other words, data from our big hospitals, university hospitals, Bristol and uh, uh, North Bristol Trust at Southmead. And so we've been trying to develop research uh, in order to improve healthcare uh, based on these, uh, these very detailed linked data. And we had applied in any case to an organization called Health Data Research UK, the support to do that and just at the time of the lockdown we submitted the application and we were subsequently interviewed via zoom because the lockdown had happened and the application was successful and of course COVID-19 happened at the same time and all those efforts have now swung towards COVID-19 
and there's been an extraordinary coming together of people working in the university with people working in the NHS to, uh, to very rapidly do things that previously had been quite difficult to achieve. So for example, we've got a modeling group in Bristol that contributes to the national modeling effort, uh, advising the government. They've been advising our local health system and uh, the links that we've been making during the process of establishing this partnership meant that uh, we were able to rapidly establish feeds of information on COVID-19 into this system-wide data set. And that's going to be hugely useful in understanding the local uh, epidemic and in helping plan services and in understanding drivers, uh, risk factors for being hospitalized with COVID-19 and for uh, outcomes of COVID-19 in our local population. So, so just to emphasize the importance of that, uh, in essence, that the, the provision of this data means that, I mean, we see on the television and read in newspapers, these diagrams demonstrating the shape of the curve of the pandemic on a national basis. But it means when the medical directors of um, UHBT or North Bristol Trust in Southmead sit down, they actually have the local equivalent of that. And they know exactly the dynamics of the local pandemic. Of, of COVID, which is clearly really important for, for planning the services and, and responding appropriately. Great. Indeed. And, um, and, and putting, all these, uh, putting all these different threads together has meant, I mean, we've already mentioned the way that the uh, Bristol Trial Centre operated at its huge speed and with huge commitment to create a randomization system that allowed the solidarity trial to launch in a whole number of countries. And in the same way, people in University of Bristol research contracts and University of Bristol IT services and corresponding people in different parts of our NHS have all worked at unprecedented speed to put arrangements in place to allow these data to inform the way we're delivering health healthcare locally. Great. Uh, well, Jonathan, you're very busy. We've heard about um, all the activities that are going on at present that you're leading. Um, so really, all I wanted to say was thank you very much for giving us your time this afternoon. It's been really great speaking to you. Pleasure talking to you as always, John.